Hi, I'm Paul Brody. We're back in my shop and we're going to work on the on the Tiger Cub. It's been a little while since we've done anything like that. Today's project is the front brake and if we have time, hopefully, I'll we'll be putting some spokes in too. Won't finish the lacing, but we're going to work on the brake. This is a stock brake on a Tiger Cub. I believe it measures five and three quarter inches, so it is not big by any stretch of the imagination. I got this hub here, I got the wheel off eBay, it's off a, a Triumph 350 500 out of the early 60s. Look how much bigger it is, so I just didn't feel very confident having a brake like this on the front. If anything pulled out, dog or something, the chances of me stopping fast with this, pretty small. So. We're going to wander over here. Mitch has his mobile camera and we're going to look at the Tiger Cub. I have been doing some work on it. It's going to get fired up fairly soon. So here it is. Got the throttle working. Got oil in the transmission. No oil here yet, but that's easy. So I think, uh, I think Tiger Cub's looking pretty sharp. If you come around the other side, we still have to set the timing, so I'm thinking, I asked Mitch, should we start it up next episode? And yeah, the head was nodding and that, so I think Mitch is pretty keen to have this on film for when it fires up. So this is the electric CDI unit. I'm going to run a, a battery. The battery is going to just work the lights. It'll be total loss, and I think the battery could go right there. That's, it kind of blends in. It's gray, black, black. So that'll be coming up. So we, we got to put a, a degree wheel on here, get the timing light. Hopefully she fires up. I'm going to get some rollers for that. And uh, that's pretty exciting. I have no idea what it sounds like. So next week, next episode, maybe. Okay, let's go back to the bench and take a look around. I decided that I wanted a larger front brake on this maybe half a year ago and I was on my Facebook feed scrolling down and then I saw the photo. Mitch is going to show you the photo and it's a Triumph 350 500 out of the 60s and the moment I saw that I knew that that's the brake that I wanted. And if you notice on that photo the forks are identical to the forks that I have on my Cub. So that was kind of a no-brainer because the wheels, the hub is just going to bolt right on, right? Well, it didn't actually work out like that. It took a little bit of, of finessing to make it fit, but it does fit the bike. So what I wanted to show you, we're going to talk about, about, about the brake linings and things like that. This is what a regular brake lining looks like. Most of them that you'll see, <clears throat> they've got a flat side. That's where the cam works. You have a cam and that's what opens up the shoes. And then you usually have either a hole that goes over a post or half a hole. That's what most of them look like. Well, <clears throat> these are the linings off the Cub. No, this is off the 500. This is not a Cub, it's going on the Cub. And you notice how they're both flat? I've never seen this before. So what actually happens is, <clears throat> You have the cam on one side, and then on the other side you have a post. And here's the post that came off of this backing plate. And if you look, can you see how it's shiny here? There's a little shine there. And if I flip it over 180, I've got another shine there. So that's where these go, like that. So I guess they center themselves like that. So when <clears throat> I got the green linings put on here, these are those Ferrodo linings, they come from England. There's a local, local chap who does this and he's been around for 40 years. So these are the green linings. These are the softer ones. And so the combination of the larger diameter and the green linings, I know it's only a single leading shoe front brake, but <clears throat> I think this is gonna be perfect for my needs. So 
I guess the trick is when I've got these linings all set up, I'm going to have to move them back and forth to where, where they're centered in the backing plate. And then I have to lock them, lock them down, and then face them in my lathe. So that's, that's coming up. I'm not sure if that's an episode. Maybe it is. But that's another job coming up. So it's a little different. So also, so what happened with this? I want to show you this because I don't understand this. <clears throat> you know, there's a, a few questions I have about the backing plate. Here's the circular piece where the brake shoes go on to, and it fits into here. And this is the cam down on the bottom. So that's pretty self-explanatory. What I don't understand is, why is this hole so big? I don't have a manual, so I've got nothing to explain it to me, but is this so you can center it if they're out a little bit? So I made a new one of these because I didn't want I didn't want the brake cable to be mounted here. I got the cable mounted up on the fork. I can show you that. So this is the new piece that I made. And you can see it's a much better fit. And then I don't have the cable holder on the outside. I just have eight millimeter stainless steel Allen screw with a aluminum big fat washer so that's what it's going to look like on the bike so right now what we're going to do is to these are all the pieces that go inside and it was a bit of a you would think that a hub is easy to figure out but no it's not actually easy to figure out and and i couldn't figure out if the spacer goes this side and then there's the lock ring left-hand thread, or if the spacer goes on the other side. So I think I've figured out that the spacer goes on the back side. So I've got the arbor press set up. So we'll put a little bit of grease onto that. And that goes in there. I found this in my solvent tank on the bottom. So that's why I was taught years ago when I started in machine shop, when you're taking things apart, always make a sketch diagram or take a photo we didn't have smartphones back then but that's a really good advice to always make a sketch so that when you put something back together you know what goes where so I went online and I looked for a parts list for a 350 500 triumph and I found it but would it download no it would not download so that was a, a bit of a bummer so in a sense, I'm sort of weighing this, but I got to get the axle in, and then when the axle's in and lubed up, I can figure out the spaces later, and then we can start assembling the wheel, and I'll show you the rim and things like that, because there's a little bit of a story there too. These are the spokes from Buchanan's, California. I think the price for spokes is $85 US, and then by the time I get it shipped up here in exchange rate and taxes and all that, $165 Canadian. That's how we do it up in Canada. These are my special tools for working on the hub. Piece of two by four with a hole and a tube I cut off and face. You'll see. I washed out all the old grease. New grease is nice. And this is good grease, it's Maxima. And I got it as a door prize at the Charles Club. See, special tools coming to use. I've got my special tools here. Here's the, here's the, here's the two by four. And then here's the, here's the tube. If the wheel was built, I could not use the arbor press. I'd have to hammer with a mallet. 
So that's what's nice about working on the hub at this stage like this because So it should just be going in. There you go. This is the lock ring. It's got the two holes. So for the two holes, I use a, a bicycle tool. It's from Park Tool USA. And I'm going backwards. Make it a little tight. Okay, so I, I didn't have a, a parts, a, a diagram, so I assume that this goes down under the circlip, put the circlip on, and then the dust cap fits down onto the circlip. It's not, not a whole lot to grab onto. This is an expensive wheel. By the time I bought the, the wheel, the hub off eBay, and then I had to buy a new rim because it had an 18 inch rim on it. And I could only find a, a stainless rim out of the US on eBay. And so the rim was expensive. It was like $373 for one rim. It's stainless steel, it'll never rust. I couldn't find a steel rim. I didn't want alloy because that's the look of the bike. It's got steel rims front and back. So by the time I paid for linings and the spokes and Oh, a tire and a rim band. I have spent over a thousand dollars on my front wheel. Can you believe that? Well, I'm in Canada, so you have to factor in the exchange rate, which right now is about 1.37. That's that's high. That that US dollar is doing exceptionally well for some some reason. So anyway, it's not cheap making a tire cub or, or any other bike. You just have to pay what the price is and then shipping is expensive. I did buy a horn off eBay a couple nights ago. It was, a, it was 11 o'clock at night and I was spending money and I got a, a horn out of China. It was slightly over $10 and free shipping. I don't know how they do it. How do they ship for free from China? So I got a 12 volt horn coming and uh, that's good, because that's one of the last things I need to make the bike street legal. Okay, so there is the last bearing. That looks like pretty good, maybe touch more. I'm, I'm looking at the circuit, circlip groove inside. Well, that's as far as it wants to go. So those tool, these tools worked out really well. My 2x4 and my tube. Okay, circlip groove, circlip going in. Oh, look at that. So I think the dust cover goes down until it hits the circlip groove. That's what I think. See how wide this is? It's got some width to it. And I think it only goes down to there. So very, very little. So we'll go over there and we'll just press that down really lightly. I guess it's, I guess it's hell. It's, oh, it spins nicely, so that's good. Okay, I'm going to show you something back at the bench. I got the hub and it was black and I didn't want it to be black because black kind of looks heavy on such a large object. This is a much bigger hub than the stock hub. So 
I, I painted it silver. This is really good paint. I think I've recommended this before. I get it out of the US. I can't find it up in Canada lately. So, so you can see I got a little bit of a touch up to do here. So I'll, I won't do that now, but you can see I got to touch it up. I'll wrap tape around here, masking tape. And there we go. We're back on the backing plate and this is the, this is the brake cam. You can see the cam there. And this is the brake lever. The brake lever is looking a little sad. That's what, that's what came with this. I did quite a bit of polishing. This was, it was pitted and corroded and scored and I started with a file to file it, then 80 grit and going down to 320 and you can still see scratches there, but I don't think I'm going to worry about that. Why I'm showing you this, because can you see I've laid that out? This is a piece of, of, of stainless steel, it's 304. It's a little bit less in the thickness department, but I'm going to make up a new lever that'll be shiny. Then I don't have to think about sanding and replating and all that. So my new lever coming up. And I wanted to show you on the spokes. This is what a lot of normal spokes look like. It's bent and it goes into a flange. On the 350 and the 500 Triumph, it's different. It's called a straight pole spoke. Can you see how, well, they didn't forget the bend. They just didn't put a bend in because it doesn't need it. Can you see how this works? This goes, it just goes through like that. So in a sense, it should be a little bit easier to lace up because I don't have to do inner and outer and go through and all that. This is just straight. So I'm going to put a little bit of oil on there. This is the first time they didn't send me oil, but I got lots from other spoke orders that they sent. So I lay the spokes out here and you put a little bit of this oil on. It stops them from seizing up. So I got the stainless spokes and the nipples are made out of brass, I understand, and they're nickel plated. So you, you can get a, a stainless nipple as well and they're more money and I, I don't see the point. These are just fine and I kind of like the look of the nickel there. So. I'm just going to stretch, lay these out and put a, one drop of oil on each one. This is my rim, my expensive rim. It's a 40 hole, 19 inch WM2. Now I made an assumption. I assumed that the rims on this bike were a WM2 and a WM3. And Last night, I had my sister over here and I was explaining to her about rims because that's a part of doing a video. You need to practice a little bit. And I'm telling her that after I got the rim, I put it next to this rim and I could tell right away that this was a lot, this was a wider rim. So I assumed, I made another assumption that they sent me the wrong rim that they actually sent me a WM3. So I actually contacted them and I told them this and probably a little surprise, they never even answered back. Bums. So I'm gonna show you a little, I got a little list here. So here's, here's my list of rims. So a WM1 is 1.6, so a WM2 is 1.85. So that's what we wanna find. So. I never really knew how to measure a rim, but I know now, so set my vernier up. When you measure rim, this all doesn't matter. It measures right here. Can you see that? Got 1.885, so that's, that's close enough. So what's going on with the rim is that I kind of I kind of like the look of this this is a 19 inch tire it's 3.0 so what I'm doing inadvertently because I made assumptions and I've got a I've got a wider rim and then I tried to buy a 3.0 tire couldn't find a 3.0 so I had to settle for a 2.75 Charles Universal tire 
So I'm putting a skinnier tire on a wider rim, which is not actually what I planned to do or anticipated, but I don't know how many people are actually going to notice. I don't know. So anyway, what we're going to do now is to, we've got the hub, we've got the spokes, spokes are lubed. We're going to thread some spokes into here and see how that goes. I got my special screwdriver here. Took a regular screwdriver and I ground it. I don't use this for anything else. And it works really well because you turn it round and round and it stays in the middle. It stays in the middle. It doesn't slip out. This is one quarter inch, so I got my one quarter inch wrench ready. So one, two, three, four. Let's see what happens here. So I'm going in until all the threads are hiding. And I think on this wheel, because the hub is so large, I think it's a one cross pattern. It's a lot easier putting the spokes in on a straight pole. You don't have to bend them and work them around each other. I hope the spokes are the right length. They haven't been checked yet. There's the weld, see it? You can see where they've, where, they've, where they've grounded off. It's a nice looking rim. I think it's made by a quality shop. It's from CWC, which I think is Central Wheel Company. I think it's out of England ultimately. So came over here to the US and I picked it up on eBay. Okay, so now we'll see what happens here. So yeah, see here, it's one, one cross pattern. A lot of other spokes, like on my Aramaki Road Racer, I use a, a three cross pattern. So I think three cross and a, 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 a two cross are probably the most common. But here we have a one cross. That's okay. It's good to be back in my shop again. I'm very happy that I have a shop. And thanks for all the support liking the videos. I think Mitch is glad to be back filming again, too. Is that right, Mitch? He's nodding. You can't see him, but he's nodding. I seem to have a lot of projects lately. We're getting a tiger cub wrapped up, and then I'll be back on Aramaki, and then... I'm not short of projects, which is good. Oh, I don't, yeah, I didn't tell you this, this entire hub, this brake hub is made out of steel. It's really heavy. I've never had a whole hub, like eight inch hub too, and made out of steel. All the Japanese ones and other ones I've had, they've never been that heavy.
Those British, they know how to make stuff, eh? Yeah, just make it out of steel. Okay. Look at that. It looks like the right length. That's a good sign. That'd be great if this all just laced up. There's my little one quarter inch. Nice fit. Okay, we're gonna put this over in the wheel building stand now and give it a spin. It's not gonna run true, but you'll see how it all fits together and how it gets held in the stand. So we got the wheel in the stand. And we'll give it a spin. And it's out a bit, but I knew that was going to happen. So that's how it is. So I'm going to spend some time here. This is not going to be on the video. I'm going to do this and uh, you're going to go away and we'll come back and we'll, we'll start up the cub motor. So I'm still doing chemo. I was thinking about it. If chemo is from zero to 100, I estimate I'm at about 62. I'm past the halfway stage and the doctors think I'm doing okay. So thanks for your support. Mitch and I like coffees. If you were to buy us some coffees, that would be very much appreciated and we would thank you. Take care. See you next time. Bye.